Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I'll introduce you to an illustration app I recommend. And this is the first time I'll we'll talk about it in my video. This app is recommended especially for those who want to do product sketching or detailed drawing. I usually use an app called Procreate for drawing, but it's almost as good as Procreate. And I've always wanted to talk about this app, but I just didn't get a chance to. So I'm super excited to be doing this finally today. To me, these two apps, Procreate and Autodesk Sketchbook, are the two ultimate illustration apps. So I'll show you lots of features in this app today. What's great about this app is that it's a free app. You can use all the features for free. This actually used to be a paid app, but it's free now, so we can do so much with this amazing app for free. Since there are many features, I will introduce them to you one by one in this video. I will talk about what kind of illustration you can draw with this app in another video, so this video will focus on tools only. This might be a long video, but I promise there will be a ton of things you can learn from this, so I really want you to watch all today. Alright, let's get started. Let's go ahead and open the app. You should see this white canvas as you open the app. About this Autodesk, it's got so many tools, but the main ones include this brush tool on the left and a tool panel on the top, a layer panel and color on the right. There are these circular buttons at the bottom, and you can set shortcut keys here, so I'll talk about them in order. First, from the brush tool on the left, you can find many different kinds of brushes in Autodesk. The ones you're seeing right now are pretty basic ones including a pencil, a marker, and an airbrush. They also have a ballpoint pen, a fountain pen, as well as a blur tool here. You can also find a variety of these textures that can be used to express the feel of your writing too. As you tap this brush tool, you can set details for the brush. For instance, you could adjust the size, opacity level, as well as writing pressure, which is something you can set to make your writing display bigger or smaller. This feature is as good as the brush tool in Procreate as you can set details, and so please give it a try and see. In case you want to use more brushes than the ones you find on the left, tap the library tab here at the top left, where it will then show you a bunch of brushes that weren't displayed. All of these brushes are really good, and I recommend them to those who are beginners too. For instance, even just for a brush called a pencil brush, we have 15 kinds of it, ranging from 4H to 9B, and there are 15 grades of graphite scale. And so as I scribble like this, the line gets darker as you can see. So I think this is something useful, especially for those who want to do sketching. I also recommend this brush called Half Tone. This brush called Tone Brush is often used when drawing a pattern like this. And it's often seen on clothes of a figure in comic books for instance, so this might be a good one for those who write comic books as well. Things like these can be found in Clip Studio too, but there is no such brush as Half Tone Brush in Procreate, so if you want to draw these dots pattern over something, I suggest using this brush. We can also find brushes like splash brush and glow brush as well as many other brushes, though I'm not sure what these brushes are used for, but take a look at what they have and see. You can use everything for free. Honestly, that's what I find the most impressive thing about this app, and you can literally use these for free.
All right, next I will introduce you to the panel at the top. I'm going to use this illustration to do that. This is something random, but I made my line stickers slightly, and I have myself as MT Sensei as a sticker, so I'll be using this to introduce you to the two panel. You can find things such as a move tool and a bucket tool at the top here, and I'll talk about the move tool first. This cross mark icon is a move tool. Once you select it, you can move this up and down, left and right freely. As you pinch in or pinch out with fingers, you can set the size to be bigger or smaller. If you look at the upper part right here, you can find options to flip horizontally and vertically as well. We have this thing called distortion tool on the very left where it will show you a bounding box. And as you move the dot around like this, the image gets distorted like this. So you could tilt the image like this when you want to apply this image to the screen or create this thing called mockup. So remember where this distortion tool can be found. If you swipe with three fingers from the right to the left, it goes back to the previous scene. If you swipe in the opposite direction, it moves forward. So just remember to use three fingers to go backward to move forward. Next is about selection tool. The selection tool can be found right next to the move tool. So for instance, click on the selection tool and select a part of this. Then grab the move tool from earlier. And the only the selection area can be moved or display bigger, flip horizontally and vertically. And you can always change these things later, so I guess a tip for digital art drawing would be not to worry too much and just keep on drawing. So in case you want to create these line stickers too, and after you write some letters, but you want to make them smaller later or change the position, just use this selection tool and it should be all good. Next, let's move on to this paint bucket tool. This bucket mark icon right here. Select the paint bucket tool to fill with the color, and you can set the color from the bottom right. Tap the bottom right corner, and this color icon here will show you a color palette Choose the color of your choice from here. And all you have to do is to just tap on the area you want to fill with the color. Like this, the color can be applied. But something I'm going to pay attention to when coloring is that we have this slider called threshold at the top. And about this threshold slider, it's basically where you can decide how densely you want to fill the color drop area. So if I sell it lower and fill in the color for instance, you can see how we have some gap here in white. But if I set it around 180 to 200 and fill in the color, it's filled with red color perfectly without any gap. So make sure to adjust the slider here when coloring. By the way, if you set it at the max level and fill in color, everything gets colored like this. So be careful not to set it too high and color according to your preferences. What I really like about this paint bucket tool is that there's an option called gradient fill right here. As you select it and drag while long tapping it like this, you can create beautiful color gradients like this. It generates such a nice color gradient. This is something Procreate doesn't offer, so I highly recommend using this app, especially for those who want to make design or draw illustration using gradients. You can always change the color later too. All you have to do is to pick a color here, and then the color should be switched automatically. We can also set this thing called a circular gradient, where the color fades gradually towards the center. Next it's about the major tool, or they call it ruler tool in Autodesk. Using this ruler tool, you can draw a perfect straight line, a curved line, as well as an oval shape. So by grabbing this straight ruler and setting it according to the screen like this for instance, I can draw a perfect straight line as I trace it over with my Apple Pencil like this. With this circle ruler, you can draw a perfect circle or create an oval shape like this to draw a perfect line. And this is super handy too. There's also this thing called a curve ruler, and this can be used when drawing curved lines. You can draw a curve line by moving these three circle dots like this to set an ideal curve, but this is a bit difficult. But once you master how to use this, I'm sure you can make something great. 
I'll introduce you to how to draw some lines with a curve ruler using this illustration on the chair in my next video. And it can come in handy too, so for those who want to do product sketching especially, I highly suggest you master this. Next, I will talk about symmetry tool. As you tap this symmetry tool, something like this axis will appear, so set it in the middle. And as you draw something either on the right or on the left, the same thing will be drawn on the other side at the same time. So this can be perfect when you want to draw things like kaleidoscope or mandara art or any graphic character with its symmetrical face, so please use this tool in case you want to do these things. There is a radial symmetry option in the symmetry tool where you can add more grid lines and as you draw something here, a part of this cake looking design it gets reflected to the rest and this is a radial symmetry tool. So using this you could draw something like a wreath. I've done a tutorial on how to use Procreate by making Christmas wreath in the past and for that one too, I used the radial symmetry option Procreate to create it. I'll put the link down below, so if you're interested in making a wreath design like this, please check it out! Next, I'll introduce you to shape tools. These shape tools are pretty straightforward. Using these tools, you can easily draw a line, a circle, as well as a square. Like this, all you have to do is to drag and draw. Having these shape tools is actually a lot more helpful than you imagine, and I find them really good. But just like this, you can easily draw shapes and to fill in, you just need to grab a bucket tool, tap the middle, and it will be filled with a color like this. This kind of shape goes well with gradients, so as I grab the gradient tool which was mentioned earlier, and apply gradients here, and now it just looks beautiful, don't you think? You can create shapes and apply gradients here, and they almost look like they were made in Illustrator. I recommend this app especially for those who don't know much about Illustrator, but you want to do these things. I want to create a sort of design here as an example, but let me introduce you to text tool first. With the text tool, you can type in text easily like this. And once you type in text, you can pinch in or out to adjust the text size. At the top here, you can change the color as well as the font. They've got a lot of font options, so please take a look. Once you pick a font, tap Done. Tap this gradient circle made earlier in the layer panel on the right and tap Copy. Now the same object of the same size is Copy, so set it in the position you prefer using both the Move tool and Transform tool. This way you can create beautiful graphic design that looks like it was made using Illustrator or Vector App. Next, I will introduce you to this thing called Predictive Tool. To explain what the Predictive Tool is, if I randomly draw a circle on the canvas like this for instance, it predicts the shape I'm trying to draw and creates a perfect over shape accordingly. This works with not only with a circle but also a square. For a square though, it doesn't seem to be working well, but when this happens, set this thing called Level higher and draw. And it will create a perfect square as you can see. This tool can be used especially when you know what you want to draw specifically such as vase or cup by having a couple circles in advance and drawing lines in the middle to connect them. This way you can draw a perfect figure like this. What we have on the right side of this productive tool is image tool. Same with many other apps with this image tool, you can insert images from your camera roll. Adjust the size here, then if you want to trace over this, add a new layer and draw lines over it. Next, I'll introduce you to this tool called Perspective Guide. This can be used when you want to draw things such as buildings or anything in perspective, and as you can see, these lines show up radially. 
In terms of a way I recommend for beginners to draw, there's this thing called infinite grid in the middle of the panel at the top right here. So tap it and now you should see some vertical lines like this. And you basically have to move them according to your preferences. You can already see a building like object right here. So all you have to do is to trace and draw lines accordingly. By the way, these lines are drawn while snapping, and this is because of the snap mode that's turned on. So if you struggle to draw lines well, make sure to turn the snap mode on. So just like this, you can draw a building-like object by tracing and drawing lines accordingly. What's often seen, or when you want to draw a room layout or anything in perspective, in case you have these lines from here towards the opposite side, or it's called one-point perspective drawing, and using this one-point perspective drawing, you can easily draw illustration of a room layout for instance. Next, I'll introduce you to this thing called a layer panel on the right. Here you can do things such as adding a new layer or showing or hiding a layer. But there is one thing I want you to remember here. As you tap a layer here, many options show up. Where you can copy or lock the layer, and there's an option that says edit HSL at the very bottom right here. What this does is that you can change the color layer like this. Even after you fill in the color, if you want to change the color, select this Edit HSL option and set the color from this bar called Hue. The second one is Saturation and the third one is Brightness which makes it black or white. The point is that you can always change the color from here later, so please remember this tool. You can also set the opacity level from this layer panel here. As you set the opacity level lower, it gets lighter. And there's an option that says blend mode below that, and you can set it on or off. We have other options such as multiply, linear burn, overlay, etc. And I've mentioned these in my previous videos. But here set the color for the part where this layer below overlaps the layer we have here. And for this part, just see and set one of these options that you like. This time, I chose the one that says Darken. And now the part that's overlapped becomes a sort of filter, which you can tell as you move it around like this. So remember to make use of this blend mode as you can apply filters like this. Okay, next let's take a look at the category at the bottom. Here we have these circles where we can find shortcuts. The brush icon at the very left is to go back to previous brush. This icon above that is a panel to control the opacity level. The one at the top is a dropper tool. And as you tap this dropper tool, a target appears like this. So set the color from here. And this way you can fill in with the color of your choice. Skipping the fourth one, the fifth one is a flip canvas tool. As you tap this, everything gets flipped, so if you want to flip the canvas horizontally, use this tool. Now going back to the fourth one, it's a tool called Double Puck. As you tap this, these two circular shapes will appear on the screen. You can move them with your fingers freely, but what it does is that it's basically a panel for you to change the brush thickness or color quickly. If I tap here, for instance, a brush will appear, and if I tap here below that, a color picker will appear. Regarding how to use this tool, when you want to change the brush thickness quickly, for instance, drag this button at the top, both to the left and to the right, while long tapping it like this. And now the brush thickness should be displayed as a percentage here, and as you move towards right, the line gets thicker as you can see. So moving horizontally is to adjust the brush thickness, but moving vertically is to control the opacity level. It gets lighter or darker. So the more you go towards the top, the closer it gets to 
and the more you go towards the bottom, the closer it gets to 100%. Right now, I'm drawing it with around 50%, and when you draw with 50%, the part that's overlapped gets kind of darker like this. So move horizontally when you want to have a lighter color, and this definitely helps you draw quickly. So remember, move horizontally to adjust the brush thickness, and move vertically to set the opacity level. The one below this double pack, we have a color button. And this color button too can be moved horizontally like this. The more you go towards the top, the lighter this purple color it gets, and the more you go towards the bottom, the darker it gets. So this thing called brightness can be altered by moving vertically here. Brightness is about having the hue which is fixed lighter or darker. So the color, which is purple in this case, still remains the same. So brightness is all about how much white or black color you want to add to your original color. So move vertically to set the brightness, and move horizontally to set saturation. Saturation is about how vivid you want the color to be. If you set it 0%, it gets black and white. And if you set it 100%, it gets super vivid, turning into a primary color. Let me draw something here. Setting this at the lowest means the lowest saturation level, so the color gets darkened like this. And as I set the saturation level higher, it gets more vivid and vibrant. Just like this, you can set both saturation and brightness level from double pack, so even though it might be difficult for those who haven't studied color at all, as you get used to the use of them and draw while making use of both the saturation and brightness level, I'm sure it will help take your drawing to the next level. So for those who want to master illustration, please study and master these. Okay, I've introduced you to these four different features in the panel. What do you think? All of these are free. You can literally do everything for free, and this app is really amazing app. So please download it if you're interested. I'll also be making videos where I'll talk about what you can do with this app in my next or the following video, and even though it's not mainly used for product sketching. In my next video, I'll show you how to draw illustrations from this tier easily. Anyone can draw something like this easily using the ruler tool which was mentioned earlier in this video. So please look forward to my next video. Also, these are the line stickers I managed to make. I didn't make them in Autodesk, but in the app called Procreate that I often use. I try to draw Amity Sensei as a character like this. The theme of these stickers is Amity Sensei and the iPad, and I included 32 different versions of Amity Sensei sticker that's funny but cute. So if you happen to be interested in getting them, I'll put the link down below, so please check it out from there. I'm hoping to make a video on the use of line stickers too, so please look forward to my upcoming videos. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you for watching my video until the end. Please give a thumbs up if you find this video helpful, and also please subscribe to my channel if you haven't as I make many videos on some creative ways to use your iPad. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.